Back on the sports show with Woody and Les and everyone else. And uh, we're going to join right now with Stu Jackson on the phone, NBA TV analyst, former head coach of the Knicks and the Grizzlies, former general manager of the Grizzlies, former executive in the NBA offices. And again, now on the uh, NBA TV network. Stu, thanks for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Sure. You know, I, I always wondered, Stu, you're sitting there in a the studio now talking about things that when you were an NBA exec, you couldn't talk about before. Do you find yourself in uncomfortable territory at times? No, isn't it great? <laughs> you get to... You're untethered now. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I understand what you guys do every day. It's great. You, know, you get to actually uh, share with uh, you know, listeners and viewers uh, you know, your opinion, and uh, nobody can say anything to you this time. So, uh, yeah, all the gloves are off. Uh, Stu, this is what he and I appreciate you coming on. I've always respected and admired your career, both on the court, as a coach, all of the th- – uh, you, you've uh, taken on more challenges than I have in my life. I mean, you've been in every aspect of, of basketball. Let me start you with a hard one. So you're back in charge of, of the NBA and dishing out metting punishment – a uh, guy talks about your mother, as Matt Barnes did. Uh, what would be your reaction to that, and what sort of punishment should he get other than maybe uh, Harden kind of giving him the business in the next game? Yeah, no, each one of these uh, situations, uh, whether they occur on the court or sometimes off the court, as with Matt Barnes and social media and conversations people have, they're all different. And they be treated as such. But whenever you look at um, making decisions on what action you will take, one of the things that you do take into account is whether or not a player has a history of these types of things or how many times they've actually come across desk in terms of, uh, you know, needing some discipline. And in Matt Barnes, I would think that that would be a factor ultimately in making any decision with him. You know, as it relates to, you know, what he said, I mean, any profanity um, that players use publicly in that manner uh, should be uh, met with some sort of penalty. But, again, because each situation is different, I don't have uh, an inkling in which way the NBA will go uh, in in this case. We just had... Pablo Estorion from uh, ESPN and ESPN the magazine, and I'm going to ask you the same question to ask him. As an observer now of the series, the Cavs, the Bulls, uh, with LeBron and with uh, Derrick Rose trying to make a triumphant comeback with John Wall situation in Washington with the five, five separated bones that were broken, with the Clippers and CP3, whether he comes back tonight, and the Houston Rockets, of those series, which one interests you the most and which one has grabbed you from a compelling situation? You know, I would have to say that the Bulls and the Cleveland series, uh, only because it's very difficult to feel, uh, get a feel for which team is going to show up. Certainly, with respect to Cleveland, the injuries, I think, are serious enough with Kevin Love and uh, you know, and now Shumpert, that it may be difficult to overcome. Uh, they have some spacing back on the floor with J.R. Smith, should help, but Shumpert's their best perimeter defender. And you know, but I, as I looked at the game last game, LeBron, I'm sure you all saw, he had that look, that look that he was not going to be denied. And I just don't know if he can do that three more times to a a Chicago Bulls team that when they're at the top of their game are playing as well defensively as they did one or two years ago and not like this past regular season where I thought they were a little bit subpar. So I look at that with great interest to see if Chicago continues to be the defensive chef in Chicago of old and whether or not LeBron by himself along with Kyrie Irving can impose their will and to win three more games. Stu, um, the team that you used to coach and the team that you used to GM for, the Memphis Grizzlies, are playing the odds-on favorite to uh, to win the NBA title, the Golden State Warriors, and the series is tied at one game apiece. Uh, I'm wondering, A, do you still pull for the Grizzlies? And again, I know it's been a while. And B, do you think they could pull this off? 
uh, of course I still pull with them for them, you know, um, just because, you know, I probably will, you know, the rest of, uh, you know, my career, uh, wherever I am. Um, you know, the Grizzlies uh, and, and the Warriors are an interesting matchup. be the most interesting of all the remaining matchups in the playoffs because they're such contrasting styles of teams. And, you know, Memphis going home, you know, with home court advantage, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they leave, you know, Memphis and they end up 2-2. But what makes it interesting is that, you know, Memphis just has the style of play that allows them to tempo or slow a basketball game down and make you pay physically in the paint with Gasol Randolph. And you add to that the fact that, you got a guy, Tony Allen, who on any given night has the ability to take one of those two Splash Brothers out of the game in the same way he did the other night with Clay Thompson, where he had a very poor night and I think ended up one for seven from three. He has that ability. So you factor that in and the fact that they've got a style of play that plays well, especially on the road. And I expect this series to go a long way, and it's, you know, it's telling where it ends. Uh, you know, before the playoffs started, I thought odds on he was going to win the NBA title. All of our guests on the Sports Show with Woody and Les are brought to you by Papa John's, the official sponsor of the Colorado Rockies Baseball Club. The day after every Rockies win, you get 50% off your regular menu price online order at papajohns.com. Go there and use the promo code ROXWIN, R-O-X-W-I-N. Stu Jackson with us, uh, NBA executive, uh, team executive, coach, player, now analyst. I'm sure he's got several more, probably the next commissioner <laughs> of the NBA. <laughs> I've, got to, I've got to go. You just got promoted, Stu. I, I've got to follow up with Les, uh, <laughs> Stu, and, and get personal here. As someone who was born in Memphis, who was raised in Memphis, whose family still is Memphis and, and, and North Mississippi, uh, I covered the uh, ABA Memphis team, which uh, was one of the most miserable franchises in the history of sports, <laughs> and played in the Mid-South Coliseum. He's driven by it. Uh, to see that team rise from my own personal standpoint, having spent half my life there, uh, I, I, I'm so happy that Memphis has been able to embrace and clutch because Memphis has gone through some hard times like New Orleans over the years. And, and I, and I yeah. wonder when you brought up how much you still feel for the Grizzlies, uh, watching that team develop and become actually a power in the NBA, what did that mean to you? Well, it, it meant a lot, particularly because, you know, one of the guys that led back to the level they're at right now was Lionel Hollins, and he was with us uh, the entire time in Vancouver as an assistant coach and, in fact, was a head coach there for a time as well. And, you know, I'm, you know, very good friends with Lionel. I like, uh, obviously, observing his success, and to have his success come to fruition it, with the Grizzlies was just, uh, you know, personally had significance to me. But, uh, you know, early on when they moved the franchise there, there was a great deal of question as to whether or not you know, the city of Memphis could actually sustain an NBA guys. Uh, they had this beautiful building, and, it, and you know, and certainly in the beginning, no one was in it. Uh, but then as they began to, uh, you know, get better and acquire assets, uh, particularly starting like with Gasol and then later with uh, taking the risk with uh, Zach Randolph and things started to pan out, it's just been great to see how the city has embraced, uh, you know, the Grizzlies in that downtown arena, which really, if you've ever been there on a game night, it's just it's re revitalized. I mean, it's really something to see, and I personally love going there. So, yeah, a great deal of significance, and probably one of the reasons I always be a Grizzly fan of sorts. Yeah, yeah, and I would just ask you one: five, How many times would you guess you ate at the Rendezvous for ribs when you were there? Boy, first I had to find it. 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's not the easiest place to farm. It's but, in an alley uh, yeah, downstairs I, I, I in an alley for the people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Unfortunately, now I'm a vegetarian, and I, I go back now, and I can't bake. <laughs> oh, hey, gosh. Stu, you can't have Memphis barbecue. That's like a life-threatening yeah. problem. S- Stu, last <laughs> thing. Uh, you worked a lot of years in the NBA office under Commissioner David Stern. Well, there's a new sheriff in town now, Adam Silver, and I'm wondering how you would assess his stewardship thus far of the league? Uh, you know, first of all, I, I think the two men are, are very different uh, in their approaches, the way that they run an organization, their personalities. The commonality that they have is they're both very good men. And I think that Adam Silver, you know, with him in the first year plus, you've seen uh, the way he has navigated this league uh, through some difficult waters, and I, I think actually... Uh, you know, from an entertainment standpoint, a game standpoint, continue to build on what David has established. But I'd have to give him, you know, an A, you know, so far in his uh, there. And I have no doubt. I mean, Adam is an extremely bright guy. He's very innovative. He's open to new ideas, has a lot of new ideas himself that he will consider, you know, not always implement, but he's always willing to listen. And I think that makes for a great, uh, certainly early on, we've seen that. All right, before we let you go, I want to mention uh, that your duties with NBA TV include live coverage of the 2015 NBA Draft Combine. That'll be on Tuesday, uh, Denver time, Colorado time. That'll be from 11 to 1, uh, late morning, early afternoon. And, uh, Stu, you'll be paired with Seth Davis providing live coverage when they make the players available in Chicago, correct? Yeah, well, now I'm really looking forward to that. It's an exciting draft class. Well, find us a guy for Denver and yeah. the Nuggets. <laughs> need a star here desperately, Stu. You yeah. might not realize this, but you need all-stars to win an NBA title. Uh, we need a couple here, all right? <laughs> yeah, you do You do need that. <laughs> yeah. Stu Jackson, NBA TV analyst and so many other hats he's worn through the years. Stu, we really appreciate your time. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. It's fun. All right, yeah. Stu Jackson. Next and- coach of the Denver Nuggets, Stu Jackson. <laughs> <laughs>